day 65, 2nd of August. We got up early this morning to get a jump start on today, but only to discover we were in pea soup fog. Okay, the fog has lifted. We are off to Lons aux Meadows. Just to set the record straight, this area is marketed as being a Viking settlement. This was corrected by our guide immediately. It was settled by Norsemen. They are only referred to as Vikings when they are invading. Oh, and by the way, women are not Vikings. Maybe because they can't rape and pillage like men? Just a thought. There is a reconstructed side of it there. And as we just come around now, in the fields straight ahead is where the original sites were excavated. Our guide was pretty darn amazing as he was born and raised in a house just a stone's throw from the archaeological site and used to play on the mounds as a young boy. When he was 12 years old, the site was discovered and he was very involved over the next 7 to 10 years with the excavation. You can't get any better first-hand knowledge than that. So here's the story. A thousand years ago, that would be 500 years before Christopher Columbus, the famous Norse explorer Leif Erikson made a camp here to use both as a base for further exploration and for boat repairs. It was used for several years. A model of the camp has been erected next to the diggings as accurately as they could make it. The guides dress in the Norse costume and take us for a walk through the camp. They were very knowledgeable and a lot of fun. And after we had talked their ears off, and we had rumblies in our tumblies, we had lunch and drove back to Kurpon to get some fogless photos. A necessity, as it was such a pretty harbour. So, let's look at some facts. France still owns part of Newfoundland. South of the Burren Peninsula are three islands, saint Pierre, Great Miguelon and Little Miguelon. Another fact, in 1908, 250 female and 50 male reindeer were introduced to Newfoundland as an experiment by Sir Wilfred Grenfell. Ten years later, for various reasons, some of them political, they were all shipped back to mainland Canada. And heading south now to St Anthony's, there's a wee shop on the side of the road called Dark Tickle, famous for its local berry jams. This was a must. Oh look, it has free Wi-Fi. Larry, you stay and load the videos and I will have a look at the shop. So here I am in this amazing wee shop, unhindered by a man who does not want to be there. Oh yeah, two prints from a local artist, two jars of sugar-free partridge berry jam, and numerous gifts later, I am done. Just in time to make the boy a cup of tea to go with his scone and partridge berry jam. I'm sure I get wife of the year again. Spent the night here in this harbour, place called Campon, spelled Q-U-I-R-P-O-N. From here you can jump on a boat and go out looking for whales. Fishing for cod. Oh, looking for icebergs. I'm still in the Campon Harbour. This cute little spot where I saw a couple of guys cleaning their fish this morning. And the water here is so clear, you can see all the fish frames are in it. And the real odd thing is they don't seem to have all the seagulls here going for it. And there doesn't seem to be the likes of crabs and all the small fish like it would in New Zealand. This is a common sight around any of the jetties and harbours here in Newfoundland. And then St Anthony's, here we come, finally. Wow, what a beautiful harbour. But it is getting late and we need to park for the night. We will get photos tomorrow. So we're off to St Carol's, a tiny harbour tucked away on the opposite side of the harbour to St Anthony's. Just the perfect place to spend the night yet again. And this barbecue is proving to be worth its weight in gold. Pork ribs with a touch of smoky flavour, served with kumara mash and mushrooms, with a thin layer of partridge berry jam over the ribs. Okay, Larry had a thick layer of jam on his such a delightful way to end our day.